I think it's interesting to note that back in 2007, David Cameron pr promised a bare knuckle fight with the then uh, Prime Minister Gordon Brown over the closures of local hospitals and local A&Es, such as Chase Farm Hospital. And actually, David Cameron and his Shadow Secretary of Health, Andrew Lamson, turned up in October 2007 at Chase Farm to show their support for the, uh, for the protesters petitioning against the closure of Chase Farm Hospital. They were welcomed at the time, but I wonder what type of reception Mr Cameron would get tonight. The last thing I'd like to say about Charing Cross Hospital in particular, and why we want, want to remain the... Uh, why we want to retain the emergency services there is because of its stroke unit. Now, the Shaping a Healthier Future report, and the KIA report as well, which is a report into the um, emergency medical students across the UK as a whole, so not just North West London, they're both fixated on this idea of specialist centralised centres, which, as I've said, can work well in the case of certain emergencies such as stroke or trauma or heart attacks. Now, the Keogh report is very proud of the fact that only eight hospitals in London will now take you if you have an acute stroke. Out of 32 hospitals, only eight deal with acute strokes. And as a result, London's stroke survival rates are actually amongst the best in the UK, uh, and even in Europe, I believe. So that's a success. That's a, that's a roaring success. But Charing Cross is one of those eight specialist units. Why do they want to close it down? I'm not sure. But the Royal College of Physicians it audits all the stroke units at all hospitals throughout the country. It calls it the sign um, audit. And it looks at 12 indicators to figure out how these stroke units are performing. One of the 12 indicators is how many patients receive a crucial brain scan within 24 hours of arriving at the hospital. At Charing Cross, 99% of patients received that crucial brain scan. Another one of its 12 parameters are how many patients are seen by a stroke consultant within 24 hours of arriving at A&E. 100% of patients at Charing Cross were seen by a stroke specialist, a stroke consultant. And it also has other parameters such as how many of the patients were given a little sit-down chat by the doctors in the first three days after their diagnosis to talk about the future, to talk about prognosis. Remarkably, 100% of patients at Charing Cross were given that talk. In fact, in November 2012, the Charing Cross Stroke Unit was ranked number one in the country. So why do we want to move it? To me, it seems like a waste of precious resources and also a risk as well, because anybody that's worked in one of these complex, pressured organisations knows that you can't simply pick up a unit such as this and move it a few miles down the road, plonk it down somewhere else and expect it to carry on functioning as normal. Charing Cross's stroke unit's success has been built on years of accumulated um, culture, morale, expertise on site. It's also inextricably linked to just the physicality of the building, you know, which store cupboards have which specialist equipment in for emergencies, which numbers do you call um, in certain situations, how all the teams work in parallel. I contend that if this stroke unit is moved to St Mary's, there's going to be a period of adjustment, weeks, months, maybe years, where its performance is suboptimal and patient care will suffer as a result. I don't think it's fair that the patients that are seen at the stroke unit in that transition period suffer. It also doesn't make sense geographically because London's eight stroke units are spread out across London so that journey times wherever you are in London are approximately equal because in the case of stroke, time equals brain. Okay, every 15 minutes that you delay, gives a 4% increase in mortality. We're moving the Charing Cross Stroke Unit to St Mary's. St Mary's is less than two miles from an existing stroke unit at UCL. So we're clustering the stroke units on actually the same street, UCL and St Mary's, and we're leaving the residents of Hammersmith and Fulham high and dry with increased journey times in these emergencies. It doesn't make sense, and that's another reason why we need our local A&Es in Charing, in Ealing and Hammersmith. I'd like to leave you with a parting thought from the King's Fund. Now, the King's Fund is a body which, amongst other things, um, audits the performance of A&E departments across the country. Its statistics from last winter, because this winters aren't available yet, showed that 5.9% of patients nationally exceeded that four-hour waiting time target 
Okay, so that's 313,000 patients in the final quarter of 2012-2013 waited more than four hours to be seen in A&E. I don't think that if waiting times were at a 10-year high, because the last time they were this bad was 2004, I don't think if waiting times are at a 10-year high, the best way to deal with that problem is close four of our nine local AMEs. That's the final reason why I think we need local AMEs. Thank you very much.